I am Irina Malkin Ontik. I work as a data scientist and I work in the field of meteorology. And my current job is data scientist. It's about meteorology. And what I do is I try to take data obtained by meteorologists from radar, different measurement devices such as rainfall, observations, what is visible, what is not visible. And I try to analyze the data and find some patterns. And when I find something new, I can try to help the meteorologists to do their job better. For example, we try to predict severe storms with this method, or we try to help runway coordination and say what is the visibility like for pilots, even in small airports, where it is not always possible to have a human observer. I was always very curious and I was studying, I couldn't decide which STEM subject I like better. So I studied theoretical physics and then I did a PhD in theoretical chemistry. And then later somehow I landed in applied informatics and I became very happy about it uh, because it is a field where I can use all of those subjects at the same time and I get to solve puzzles every day. During a typical work day, I have to check whether my computer programs have started running, whether they have finished completely or whether there is something that I need to restart. Then we usually have a meeting about a project where I meet a lot of experts from very different fields. And we all discuss about the project and how we can help it, what needs to be done. And I try to learn as much as possible about background information. And afterwards, I do some programming, make some analysis, think about it a lot because it is a puzzle I'm solving. And I also read a lot of scientific papers to understand things. And sometimes I write some of the papers. When I was in high school, I have loved them mathematics, physics, and chemistry, not so much computer science at the time. And then I have decided to study theoretical physics because I did not want to perform experiments, but I was in love with physics. And after I have finished studying physics, I have worked on theory of relativity in my PhD thesis, in my diploma thesis. And then I wanted to do something different. So I made a PhD in theoretical chemistry about a topic where physics and chemistry meet. And then later on, I worked as a scientific researcher at the ATH Zurich and at the, at the Zurich University, where I did some more theoretical chemistry. And when I finally returned to Slovakia, I decided that I want to learn a lot about artificial intelligence and started working as a researcher in computer science. And then now I have decided that I want to use all of the subjects I love. So I have started recently a new career in data science. Uh, what has greatly helped me when I was transitioning there were blogs about artificial intelligence and some courses on Coursera by Andrew NG about artificial in intelligence. They gave me a sort of introduction which I needed so I can build further knowledge upon that. My other colleagues have studied mathematics, so it's not necessary to study physics or computer science to do data science. If I would be starting it all over, I think I would directly start with computer science and specialize in data science because this is a, an emerging field which you can study right now. It was not there when I was studying at the university. In this way, I could directly start with my current job. The most important skill in my work is curiosity. It is my main motivation for choosing the job and it inspires me to do work in it. I need it a lot because I want to find out about things from the data we have. The next important thing is collaboration. Data science, whether in meteorology or somewhere else in another field, is a meeting point of several disciplines. In order to analyze data, it's very important to know where it came from and which questions are we trying to answer. So we have a lot of cooperation with different field experts. We meet and talk a lot. Uh, start strategic planning. When we are working on a project, we need to, 
to think ahead. We have to plan where will we get the data, how will we process it. Sometimes this can take up to several months. How will we analyze it? Then once we have analyzed the data, we can think which models are we going to try, how are we going to evaluate them, how are we going to test them, and finally, how are we going to implement the best model to production so that it can be used. I also spend a lot of my time programming, so it is an essential skill. Because when we have a lot of data, it's no longer possible to work with office programs such as Excel. But what we need to do is to, to use more powerful tools such as Python. Artificial intelligence is also a very useful skill to have because I usually use it for most of the classification and prediction tasks. Classification task is when I try to decide whether it's a sunny day or a rainy day. And prediction is when I try to predict how much is the visibility. Is it 10 kilometers or only two? Data presentation is a good skill to have as well, because once you have some results, you have to present them and talk about them. Data science is a universal skill set you can apply to any industry. Uh, you can choose the industry based on which other topics interest you besides mathematics and programming. For example, if you always wanted to find out about finances, you can be a data scientist in insurance companies. If you want to produce cars, you can use data science to detect faulty parts. The main challenges are programming skills because you have to get your programs to work. And then you need a lot of out of box thinking and dealing with unexpected problems. Because we are dealing with real world, nothing is perfectly just the way you expect it. And sometimes we find out that some of the data is corrupted and we have to correct it to make correct predictions. Uh, my advice to students is stay curious, solve a lot of puzzles and learn to program. If you want to support your students, uh, you have to let them discover patterns. For example, it is always a great idea to perform experiments several times, record the observed data, and then analyze it. Uh, when you start to think and find and look for patterns, you can start with a few data points, which means you can drop something and then count how long it takes for it to hit the floor. It is perfectly okay to repeat this experiment five times maybe, and then you can think what is common in these points. You can vary the height as well or the weight and see what determines it.